Today I'm going to talk about three different nonlinear distortions. Chrominance nonlinear phase, chrominance nonlinear gain, and chrominance to luminance intermodulation. These three distortions are often grouped together because they're measured with the same test signal and because they all have to do with ways in which the chrominance amplitude affects other parts of the signal. The three distortions are sometimes referred to as chrominance nonlinearities. The chrominance, as you'll recall, is the high frequency portion of the signal which contains color information. When added to the luminance signal, which contains brightness information, a complete composite television signal is formed. In the case of these three distortions, it's most straightforward to first discuss the test signal and then define the distortions in terms of how they affect it. The modulated pedestal signal, sometimes called pink panther because of the color it makes on a picture monitor, is used to measure these parameters. This signal consists of three chrominance packets superimposed on a luminance level, typically a 50 IRE pedestal. The three packets all have the same phase but different amplitudes. The amplitudes of the packets are typically 20, 40, and 80 IRE. This signal is available in the full line form we've been looking at here, or as a part of a combination signal, such as NTC7 combination. In this signal, it appears at the end of the line. Let's first consider chrominance nonlinear phase. This distortion is present if chrominance phase is affected by chrominance amplitude. Let's relate this to the modulated pedestal signal. Each chrominance packet has the same phase as the others in the original test signal. If the system under test delays the three packets differently because of their different amplitudes and therefore changes the relative phase of the packets, there is chrominance nonlinear phase distortion present. The phase difference is expressed in degrees of subcarrier phase. The second distortion in the chrominance nonlinearity group is chrominance nonlinear gain which is present whenever chrominance gain is affected by chrominance amplitude. In other words, the proportionality between the input chrominance amplitude and the output chrominance amplitude does not remain constant as the input amplitude is varied. If the chrominance packets in the modulated pedestal signal vary from their nominal values by different amounts at the output of the system, this distortion is present. For example, if the 20 IRE packet is exactly 20 IRE at the output, but the 40 IRE packet is 10% high, there is chrominance nonlinear gain in the system. Chrominance to luminance intermodulation is the final distortion in this group. This distortion is present when luminance amplitude is affected by the amplitude of the superimposed chrominance. The luminance change might be caused by clipping of the chrominance, quadrature distortion, or crosstalk between luminance and chrominance. In any case, the presence of chrominance has affected the luminance level. We measure this distortion by examining the effects of the three different chrominance levels on the luminance pedestal. Chrominance nonlinearities, like all other nonlinear distortions, should be measured at different APL levels in order to take into account all level-dependent effects. These three distortions will all affect your picture in different ways. Remember that hue, red versus green versus blue, and so on, is determined by the phase of the chrominance signal. Saturation, or the vividness of the color, is determined by the ratio between chrominance amplitude and luminance amplitude. The modulated pedestal signal, in fact, provides a nice way to illustrate what saturation differences look like in both picture and signal terms. In this signal, the luminance level remains constant across the line, but the chrominance amplitude changes from packet to packet. That means that the saturation changes from packet to packet, from pale to more intense pink. Meanwhile, the phase of the chrominance packets, and therefore the hue, is remaining constant across the line. Keeping these things in mind, let's consider how our three distortions will affect the picture. Chrominance nonlinear phase will cause the hue of the colors to have an unwarranted dependence on color saturation. In the test signal, as saturation changes across the line, hue will change with it when this distortion is present. In the case of chrominance nonlinear gain, color saturation will be incorrect in affected pictures. Remember that any time the ratio between chrominance amplitude and luminance amplitude isn't correctly transferred, the saturation is affected. In the test signal, 
If saturation doesn't change in the same way across the line, at both the input and the output of the system under test, this distortion is present. Chrominance to luminance intermodulation will cause both luminance levels and color saturation to be affected. It's hard to pin down a specific effect that you might observe in this case, but in general, color saturation and brightness will be incorrect in some kinds of pictures. By discussing the effects of the various distortions on your picture, I don't want to give the impression that you can normally identify distortions in this way. Usually you can't. It takes a significant amount of distortion before it's even noticeable in the picture, and it's extremely difficult to distinguish between the various distortions. For example, the picture effects of chrominance nonlinearity distortions are actually very similar to those caused by differential phase and gain. The interdependencies are so complex and the effects so hard to pin down that it is generally impossible to tell exactly what's going on just by looking at the picture. For reasonable amounts of distortion, the most you can hope for is a few clues about what tests to make. For example, if hue seems to have unexpected variations, check both differential phase and chrominance nonlinear phase. Let's move on now to the measurement procedures for these distortions. Chrominance nonlinear phase is measured with a vector scope, which provides a convenient means of looking at chrominance phase relationships. First of all, let's look at an undistorted pink panther signal. Here's the burst vector, and these three dots are the chrominance packets. You can see that they have different amplitudes, but the same phase. Now I'll introduce the distortion. You can see now that the packets have different phases. We can make a measurement by lining up the smallest packets phase with the vertical axis, and then using the vector scope variable gain to bring the largest packets dot out to the graticule circle. Now we can read from the graticule that this signal has a chrominance nonlinear phase distortion of about eight degrees. Chrominance nonlinear gain is measured with a waveform monitor. This is a distorted signal, although that's not necessarily obvious at first glance. To make a measurement, first verify that the amplitude of the middle packet is 40 IRE, which is its nominal value. If it isn't, use the variable gain to normalize it to 40 IRE. The next step is to measure the amplitudes of the first and third packets. In this case, the first packet measures 20 IRE, which is its nominal value. The third packet, on the other hand, measures only 72 IRE, rather than its nominal value of 80 IRE. The difference of 8 IRE is therefore the amount of chrominance nonlinear gain distortion. You might also want to express the error as a percentage of the nominal packet amplitude. In this example, the third packet has a 10% distortion, or 8 divided by 80 times 100%. Chrominance to luminance intermodulation is also measured with a waveform monitor. In this case, however, you want to remove the chrominance information from the display so that you can examine deviations in the luminance level. This is accomplished by enabling the waveform monitor's luminance filter, which filters off all of the chrominance information. This is a clean signal, so we see a single pedestal level. Now I'll introduce the distortion, and we can see that there are level changes in the luminance pedestal corresponding to the positions of the chrominance packets. To make a measurement, normalize the pedestal level and then measure the amount of level change in it. There is very little agreement among the major measurement standards about how to express the amount of chrominance to luminance intermodulation, so I'll add a word of caution here rather than giving a definition. The thing that varies from standard to standard is the choice of what to use as the reference level. You can express the level change as a percentage of the pedestal level or as a percentage of the measured white bar level or as a percentage of 714 millivolts. Or you can normalize the pedestal level to 50 IRE and express the error in IRE. The distortion can be adequately described with any one of these methods, so the important thing is to standardize on one definition for your facility so that everyone is speaking the same language. If you base most of your measurements on a standard such as NTC7 or RS250, you'll want to go with the definition outlined in that standard. Let's review the three chrominance nonlinearity distortions, all of which are measured with the modulated pedestal signal. Chrominance nonlinear phase is present when chrominance phase is affected by chrominance amplitude. It's measured with a vector scope by comparing the phases of the three chrominance packets.
Chrominance nonlinear gain is present when chrominance gain is affected by chrominance amplitude. It's measured with a waveform monitor by noting how the amplitudes of the three chrominance packets compare to their nominal levels. Chrominance to luminance intermodulation is present when luminance level is affected by the amplitude of the chrominance which is superimposed upon it. This distortion is measured by enabling the luminance filter in the waveform monitor and measuring the amount of level shift in the pedestal.